Okay, then we will start with your chapter four today. Uh, along the way, some of the example I will be using straight away the exercise from the notes. Okay, so make sure you have done your tutorial. If you have tried your tutorial, then you know the question that I'm using is actually from the from the tutorial. Lah. Okay, uh, your chapter four is your introduction of organic chemistry. So when it's an introduction to organic chemistry, just a kind reminder. Starting from this chapter, we'll be starting with your organic chemistry. Means that you'll be dealing a lot with your carbon, hydrogen, etc. Okay. And very little calculation, almost no calculation. Okay. So your calculation stopped until last week in your electrochemistry. If I'm not mistaken, with me is nurse equation and with your Amali lecturer is your Faraday. Right. So that is the last calculation. So starting today, there will be a lot of writing, a lot of kamu kena lukis, you need to draw. So don't be lazy. The tips untuk belajar organic satu je. Pick up your pen and start writing. Never imagine, because the thing is simple, what are we going to do is carbon. And you should know carbon can have maximum four bond. So carbon maximum four bond, tak payah imagine, draw it. Okay? Takkan tak boleh kira satu, dua, tiga, empat weh. Tak boleh kira satu, dua, tiga, empat, empat, kita balik tadi kah lah. All right, saya hantar kamu balik tadi ke free, saya bayar. So, uh, make sure you pick up your pen and make sure you start uh, writing. In organic chemistry also, there will be a lot of uh, if. The answer is like this. Dia akan banyak if tau. Dia banyak keadaan, dia banyak condition yang berbeza. So, if you come across different condition or you come across, kalau saya tulis macam ni, boleh ke tak? Sila tanya kalau tu. Okay, there will be condition the if saya terima. Akan ada uh, fahaman kamu if tu betul. Kalau tu betul, then saya okay je. Tapi kadang-kadang if tu nampak macam sama tapi sebenarnya beza. Then tolong tanya. Okay, there will be a lot of the different condition along the way until the end of the semester. We will be learning this organic chemistry for the coming seven chapter. Okay. Good news and bad news is they are very similar. Asas dia masih adalah carbon and hydrogen. That is the good news. And the bad news is, kalau kamu still salah carbon and hydrogen dari awal, kamu akan salah sampai hujung. So get that right. Okay? So before we go into your organic chemistry and the starting of your organic chemistry, you should be able to draw your carbon hydrogen lah or that. And the introduction of organic chemistry for this topic Duka cita duk maklumkan, dia akan masuk dalam semua topik. Dia boleh masuk dalam semua topik. Because it's the introduction. So, apa yang kita belajar minggu ni, uh, saya boleh habiskan dalam minggu ni. Apa yang kita akan belajar dalam minggu ni, akan masuk dalam semua chapter. Okay, so apa-apa yang tak faham, tolong tanya. This chapter will be cover four subtopic. I think we can finish until isomerism today, depends on your question. Okay, we definitely can go in a bit of isomerism in these two hours. And probably the next hour, the third hour, we will be going into reaction of organic compound. Reaction of organic compound, kamu akan nampak lagi jelas bila kita belajar chapter lain, bila kita start masuk reaction. Cuma kita belajar asas kat sini. Okay, so talking about molecule and structural formula. Okay, molecule and structural formula, there is a few things I want to remind you. They are the same. All right, just one thing. They are the same. They have same molecular formula. All right, they have the same molecular formula. Apa maksud same molecular formula? Contoh kalau uh, bilangan carbon dia C4H8, dia akan ada C4H8. Kalau dia pegang C4H10 oksigen satu, dia akan pegang benda yang sama. And even they have the same arrangement. All right, they are basically the same. And you know what makes them different in molecular ataupun structural formula that we are going to learn today? They are only different ataupun differ in way of writing. Diorang hanya berbeza dari cara kita menulis. Okay? Contoh. Contoh yang sangat simple. Kalau teacher ada C4, uh, sorry, C2 lah malah weh. C2H6 dah lah. Pendek sikit kan? Kalau teacher ada C2H6, kita boleh susun C2H6 like this. 
Okay, that is our C2, H6. Tapi, dia tetap adalah sama kalau Miss Wong tulis CH3, CH3. Nampak? They are only different in way of writing. Okay, they are exactly the same. Dulu masa zaman sekolah, kita belajar tulis A macam ni. Lepas tu kita belajar tulis A macam ni. Lepas tu ada satu writing yang saya tak tahu kamu belajar ke tak. Dia ada belajar the, the Italic style of writing which is horrible. Okay. And they are still A. They are the same. They are exactly the same. They are only different in way of writing. Okay. Remember that. Therefore, ada reaction tak? Any reaction happen? Ada reaction? Kalau reaction berlaku bermakna saya ada A tambah B dapat C. Itu reaction. Ada reaction tak? Tak ada. We are learning the introduction. We are learning the basic of the thing sayang. Dia tak ada reaction lagi. Kita hanya belajar cara menulis. Okay. Dan kita ada tiga cara menulis. Alright. We have three method of writing. Condense is one of it. Expanded. Is another method of writing. Skeletal is another method of writing. Okay. Mereka hanya adalah cara menulis. Okay. So, what is mean by condense? Uh, baca sendiri boleh tak pesan nak bagi uh, fight, uh, conclusion dia. In the condense, we compact everything. Alright. We compact everything. And how do we compact everything? We do not show single bond. Kita takkan show single bond. Okay, kita takkan show single bond. Tapi kita boleh show multiple bond. Okay, what is mean by show multiple bond? Multiple bond adalah contoh double bond atau triple bond. Yang tu kita boleh tunjuk. Okay, dan apa maksud teacher? We compact everything. We compact everything, we group them together. Kita akan group them together. Okay, that is what we mean by compact. So, kita tengok sikit apa beza condensed dengan expanded. From the word expanded, you know one thing. We show everything. Alright, we show everything. All the bond. Alright, we show all the bond including cuts. Double bond, single bond, triple bond. Kita tunjuk semua. Okay. <clears throat> Next and last but not least in the skeletal. Skeletal kamu kena pak tengok betul-betul, kena faham betul-betul. Hanya kalau kamu boleh faham skeletal, you are very good. Because skeletal is like the highest level. But, there is always a but. But, we will seldom use skeletal. You only need to understand. You need to be able to do. Kalau soalan tanya, kita akan guna. Kalau soalan tak tanya, kita takkan guna. Kenapa saya kata skeletal adalah yang paling susah ataupun the highest level because dia akan hide. Yang tadi kita hanya compactkan dia. Kita hanya groupkan dia. Kita tak hilangkan apa-apa. Lepas tu kat expanded lagi senang lah. We show everything. Yang tu paling senang lah. Betul. Tapi kat skeletal we are going to hide carbon and hydrogen. Okay. We are going to hide carbon and hydrogen tapi kita boleh tunjuk semua benda yang lain. What is mean by hiding carbon and hydrogen? I want to start from skeletal. Okay. Looking at this bond. Okay. Looking at here. What is this stand for? This every single dot that I have, every single corner that I have, represent carbon. Ni sebenarnya adalah carbon. And I guess everybody knows carbon for bond. Betul? Tak tahu hang jaga. Boleh kira satu, dua, tiga, empat? Kita akan kira 1, 2, 3, 4 untuk 3 bulan lagi. Set. Untuk 2 bulan lagi. Han tak boleh kira 1, 2, 3, 4 aku ketuk pala. Apa maksud saya kira? Look at this first carbon. Saya label lah untuk kamu nampak. Look at this first carbon. This first carbon right now holding one bond already. Betul? So saya patut ada 4. Tapi sekarang saya hanya pegang satu ikatan. So daripada 4, 1 adalah dengan carbon. So, berapa lagi ikatan yang tinggal? Tiga. So, tiga lagi ikatan yang tinggal tu sebenarnya adalah hidrogen yang kita dah 
hilangkan that we hide just now. Okay, same thing over here. Let's look at our second carbon. Okay, nombor tak payah letak ya dalam exam, nombor tak payah letak ya. Okay, look at our second carbon. So this second carbon having one bond, two bond, three bond. Ada empat ikatan dan ada tiga. So berapa lagi hidrogen? One more. So one more bond that the carbon is not enough. Kita nampak eh dia tak cukup ikatan lah. Bila kat skeletal dia tak cukup ikatan, bermakna dia adalah hidrogen. Nampak? Okay. Next question. Ni, carbon ketiga. How many hydrogen that this third carbon should hold? Two. Dua. Dua. Umi kata dua, Alif kata dua. Boleh kira satu, dua, tiga, empat? Okay. Next, C empat. Okay. Next, C empat. Berapa hydrogen? Three. Three. Okay. This one? Satu. Satu. Setuju? Okay. Uh, this one? Two. Dua. So, double bond akan dikira sebagai dua ikatan. So, bila carbon ini pegang dua ikatan, dia akan pegang dua lagi hydrogen. Nampak? Okay. Therefore, satu line like this. One single line like this represent how many carbon? Dua. Dua. They can represent dua carbon. So, berhati-hati bila kamu kira. Okay? Dan, biasanya kalau kamu perasan, kita akan lukis skeletal like this, you know. The angle is like this. Okay? Kita akan biasa lukis the angle is like this. Kenapa kita akan biasa lukis the angle like this? First and foremost, Remember tetrahedro? Okay. Kenapa ikat, uh, lukisan dia adalah macam ni? Sebab carbon ni yang pegang dua lagi hydrogen. The dua hydrogen adalah like this. The tetrahedro of a carbon bila dia pegang empat ikatan. Sebab tu kita selalu akan lukis dalam bentuk like this. Okay. And of course if you ask me kalau teacher saya tak nak lukis macam ni. Saya nak lukis macam ni boleh ke? Boleh. Tak salah pun. Tapi nampak tak bijak lah. Tu je. Okay, tak salah pun. Still adalah carbon, still adalah carbon, still adalah carbon. Tapi nampak punya lah tak bijak. Ha, itu je lah. Okay, so dengan kata lain tak payah tunjuk lah. Kalau bodoh tu simpan sikit tak payah tunjuk kat orang. Saya gurau je, you all very smart. Okay, next in the expanded, we show everything. Okay, so I want to move from skeletal to expanded to condensed. Okay. So, tengok skeletal, macam mana kita nak kembangkan skeletal, we agree that this is all our carbon. So, tadi kita dah cuba kembangkan dah the first carbon over here, that is my carbon number one. That is my carbon number one. Tengok, dia ada tiga hidrogen yang kita dah kira tadi. Kenapa tiga hidrogen? Sebab dia pegang satu ikatan. So, tiga lagi adalah hidrogen. Nampak? So, in the expanded, we show everything. Sebab pelajar akan selalu rasa skeletal susah. Tak susah pun, kira satu, dua, tiga, empat je. Betul? Alright, tak susah pun. Saya, sebab tu saya nak mula daripada dia untuk kamu nampak dia tak susah pun. The next, the second carbon over here, the second carbon over here, dia pegang satu Cl. Dia pegang satu Cl and then dia terikat dengan carbon ni, dia terikat dengan carbon kedua, sorry, carbon pertama dan carbon ketiga. So dia pegang satu lagi hydrogen. Nampak? Kamu hanya perlu kembangkan. And of course, kalau kamu tanya saya, Teacher, I don't want to kembangkan straight lah. Saya tak nampak dia straight. Saya nak kembangkan dia macam ni juga. Boleh. Tak salah. Okay. Tak salah. Kalau kamu kata, oh, the four hydrogen is like this. Tak salah. Tak ada masalah. You can do it. It's no problem. But we will normally make it straight chain because we are normally write it in straight because it's neat. Dia nampak cantik. Dia nampak kemas. Okay. So, kamu boleh sambung. So, carbon ketiga, nampaklah dia pegang dua ikatan dah. So, dua lagi adalah hydrogen. Itu maksud dia. Okay. So, tak susah pun. Tak ada masalah. Double bond. Sambung. Sama je. Saya ada carbon, carbon double bond. Saya ada carbon, carbon double bond. Hydrogen seperti yang kita setuju. Satu, dua. Satu, dua. Simple. And the only things that we are doing so far, kita hanya copy 
we are basically writing the same thing in a different method. That's it. Kita tak buat reaction apa-apa lagi. Okay? And moving from your condensed, uh, so, sorry, moving from your skeletal to expanded or either way to the condensed, kita nampak we hide all the single bond. What makes it different in the condensed is we are going to hide all this. Kita akan hilangkan semua ikatan ni. Okay? So, bila dia duduk sebagai C yang pegang tiga hydrogen, saya akan label dia sebagai CH3. Okay? Next, kalau saya ada CHCl, saya nak hilangkan semua ikatan yang ada kat tepi dia. So, saya jadi CH and pay a close attention. Nampak tak bracket CL? Apa maksud bracket CL? What is mean by the bracket CL means that the CL is bonded to this carbon. Okay? Kalau dia tak ada bracket, nak tunjuk siap-siap kalau kamu tulis dan dia tak ada bracket. Kalau kamu tulis like this, tak ada bracket. Apa maksud benda ni? It means the carbon CH3, CH bonded CL bonded C. Nampak beza? Okay. Alright. So please pay attention on the bracket. Kita akan ada soalan yang ada bracket nanti. So look at the bracket sebab tu contoh yang saya bagi semua yang bracket. Kalau dia tulis terus, dia tak ada masalah. Dia bila bracket tu ataupun uh, cabang kamu duduk tengah-tengah like this. Cabang kamu duduk tengah-tengah tu yang jadi masalah. Betul? Aku nak letak macam mana? Sebab Miss Wang kata tak boleh tunjuk single bond. So kalau tak boleh tunjuk single bond macam mana saya nak hilangkan single bond tu tapi dia still duduk pada carbon yang betul. Simple. Using bracket, that means this OH is this carbon punya. Makes sense? Boleh? Okay. So pay attention on how to make the single bond disappear. Kalau dia hydrogen, saya tak risau. Tapi bila dia kumpulan lain, dia jadi problem. Hydrogen, hang tulis je lah. CH2, CH3, tak ada masalah. Okay. Makes sense? Ada soalan setakat ni? No? Okay. I'll show you again if uh, more a bit of structure yang mungkin nampak complicated sikit lah. Semua contoh yang saya ambil ni adalah contoh dalam uh, soalan tutorial kamu exercise tak tahu berapa. And 4.1 lah definitely exercise 4.1. Dan saya pilih dua untuk setiap satu. Okay. So you can do it together. So look at the condensed structure yang saya pilih memang saya ambil yang susah terus ya. Look at the bracket. So, looking at the bracket over here, nampak tak CH3 bracket 3? And look at this carbon. Carbon ni tak pegang hydrogen langsung. Nampak tak carbon ni tak pegang hydrogen langsung? Apa maksud carbon ni tak pegang hydrogen langsung? That means this carbon is the one that holding O CH3 yang duduk dalam bracket. Nampak? Okay. So, if I expand the structure, okay, if I expand expand the compound, I will be starting with this carbon. Teacher nak start dengan carbon yang arrow merah ni. So, teacher akan start dengan dia. Dia pegang tiga lagi carbon yang pegang CH3. Okay. Sebab dia kata expanded structure kan. So, we need to show all the bond. So, CH3. Oops, salah. Hydrogen. This carbon again holding another CH3. Okay. Dah, setuju ke? Cara nak baca bracket je pun, tak ada apa. Next, we are moving to the next carbon. We are moving to the next carbon, CH2. Senang. Sambung sahaja dengan CH2. Okay. Sambung sahaja dengan C. H2. Sambung lagi dengan CH2 and CH2. Ada dua lagi CH2. So, kembangkan je lah. Alright, kembangkan je lah. Dan, looking at the question like this sayang, rasa-rasa, boleh imagine tak? Alright. Dan dalam exam, pegang pen, tulis terus. Tengok soalan, fahamkan apa maksud bracket. Tak payah fikir lama weh. Pegang pen lukis. Tu je cara paling senang dalam organik. 
Budak selalu tanya, susah lah teacher organik. Tahu tak kenapa organik susah? Sebab kamu tak nak pegang pen dan kamu tak nak menulis. Dan organik akan jadi susah. Uh, I love organik. Kalau tak ada organik, saya rasa saya gagal kimia kot. My degree, my degree is gone. I think I don't graduate. I love organic. Okay, it saved my life, I guess. And it's simple. So carbon, double bond O. Kita kembangkan bahagian belakang pula. And then kita kembangkan N. Single bond N. Nampak N. N pegang H2. Nampak. And we show everything. That's it. Okay. To be honest, that's it. Alright. And then, we are moving to the skeletal. So, apa yang saya akan selalu buat dalam skeletal ada banyak cara. Okay. Ada banyak cara nak lukis skeletal. Antara yang saya suka mula lukis skeletal adalah, saya akan kira dulu carbon dengan carbon -y. Saya akan start dengan carbon like this. Ada orang yang akan kira 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Dia akan buat terus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Dia akan buat macam ni terus. Lepas tu baru dia tambah kiri kanan atas bawah tu. Pun boleh. Okay. Tapi saya mat, saya jenis yang malas nak go through balik. Dari bila kalau saya dah buat dari awal, saya nak start, dari awal saya nak habiskan. So saya akan mula dengan carbon first second. Okay. So, this is my carbon first. This is my carbon second. Carbon second ada dua lagi. Carbon second ada dua lagi. Nampak? Carbon second ada dua lagi kat sini. This one, this one. Okay. Lepas tu bergerak daripada carbon second. Saya bergerak kepada carbon third, fourth, fifth. Ada tiga. So, dari carbon second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay. So sampai ke lima, masuk ke enam. Masuk yang ke enam, carbon ke enam. Carbon enam pegang double bond O. Saya akan letak terus. Okay, saya akan letak terus double bond O. And then remember in the skeletal, we only hide hydrogen and carbon. Okay, and we show nitrogen, betul? Alright, we show nitrogen. Therefore, Daripada carbon 6 turun ke bawah, dia adalah nitrogen. Sila tunjuk nitrogen tersebut. Okay, sila tunjuk nitrogen tersebut. Make sense? Okay, simple. And kira, at the end of the day, cara nak check adalah kira jumlah high carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Sebab budak akan selalu buat macam ni tau. 1. Padahal kat sini ada berapa? 2. Okay. So that's why the first question that I teach you just now in skeletal is satu line ada berapa carbon? Okay. Ada 2. So berhati-hati bila kamu lukis. Alright. Question so far. Uh, I I know that the table I give to you in the book is very small. But the space yang dia ada tu sangat kecil. Wait, saya bagi space dalam jadual je. Han lukis lah balik kat kertas lain. Tahu? Alright, jangan bagi alasan teacher kecil sangat tak boleh buat. Aku ketuk kepala Han. Alright, Han lukis lah balik. Okay, next. This is probably the hardest already that you might come across. If you realize, we have bracket, all right, in bracket. Okay, we have bracket in bracket. So I want you to pay close attention to this one. Apa maksud bracket in bracket? So kita ada CH3 dua C. CH3 bracket 2 C. Yang ni nampak agak senang lah. Again, teacher bermula dengan carbon yang pegang ni. Okay, carbon yang pegang 2 CH3. So sama, carbon ni adalah carbon merah. Dia pegang carbon 2 CH3. Kembangkan. Okay, dia pegang 2 carbon CH3. Dah selesai. Setakat ni. Okay. 
Next. Carbon ni pegang bracket. Alright, carbon ni pegang bracket sekali lagi. NH. Bermakna NH ini, bermakna NH ini adalah C punya. So, saya sambungkan NH tu, kita tukar colour sikit. Kita sambungkan NH tu kepada C. And, pegang H kan? Betul. And do you realise that we have another bracket in that bracket? So, rasa-rasa CH2, CH3 siapa punya? N. N punya. Alright, it's actually N punya. So, sambung kat N, N pegang C. H2, N pegang C, H3. Okay. Nampak dah? Uh, ada banyak latihan dalam soalan kamu dan saya pilih yang saya rasa budak seraga lah. Yang senang-senang tu saya yang buat sendiri lah. Okay. Next. And last but not least, yang ni sangat-sangat jarang keluar sebab saya tak minat kalau dia keluar macam ni. Saya sangat tak minat dan you are not allowed to do this. Kalau kamu perasan, kita bersambung dengan CH2, H5. Okay. Sangat jarang sebab saya sendiri pun saya takkan bagi soalan macam ni. Apa maksud C2H5? C2H5 maksudnya dia adalah C, C, H, uh, lukisan saya dah jadi buruk. Wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to put my H over here. I want to put my CH2, CH3 over here. Then it's better. Okay. So, this CH2 adalah C2, H5. Okay. Dan cara condense sampai macam ni. Cara condense C2, H5. Saya nak pesan siap-siap kat sini. You jangan buat. Kita hanya boleh buat CH2, CH3. Faham? Alright. Kita tak boleh buat condense like this. Saya tak nak nampak apa-apa condense macam ni dalam jawapan kamu nanti. Okay. Tolong eh. So that is win by C2H5. And then when you make, make it into your skeletal. Okay, when you make it into your skeletal, starting from the first carbon, first, second carbon, standard, saya akan mula dengan yang pertama kedua. So, that is my pertama kedua. Okay. So, ikut jari kamu. Jari kamu letak kat carbon pertama, okay, saya dah bergerak ke carbon kedua. So, bila saya dah bergerak ke carbon, if only I can show you my finger on the screen. I have carbon pertama, I have carbon kedua. Moving from carbon kedua, atas tu ada satu carbon. So, naiklah ke atas. Atas ada satu carbon. Betul? Lepas selesai, bawah ada N. So, tunjuk bawah ada N. Okay. Bawah ada N. N. Bawah N pula ada apa? Bawah N ada dua carbon. Satu. Dua. Satu. Dua. Nampak? Okay. N dah selesai weh. Semua ni dah selesai. 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 Bergerak pula ke yang lain. Bergerak pula ke carbon 2 kat tepi yang sambung dengan carbon 2 ni tadi. Betul? Dia pula pegang berapa? Pegang 2 lagi carbon. 1, 2. Nampak? Okay. I hope we are doing it together. Because if you are, if you are only looking at it, you are done. Alright? If you are only looking at it, how memang takkan dapat. Alright? Boleh? Senang. Okay. So, uh, kita banyak fokus pada latihan. Of course, kita banyak fokus pada kira hidrogen, berapa hidrogen. Kat sini saya rasa yang kita banyak, sangat banyak nak fokus adalah cara nak baca the condense that is given. Apa maksud bracket, apa maksud bracket in bracket, apa maksud C2, H5 and so on. Okay. Dia bukan banyak, uh, yang akan banyak mengira hidrogen adalah yang akan datang. Expanded kita buat satu yang susah je lah. Susah sungguh kan? Ada. Ya? Yeah? Sorry miss. Uh, 
for the expanded um, structure, boleh buat um, CH3. I mean like, kan kita buat setiap satu kan C, lepas tu H, H, H kan. Kalau hmm. buat C, lepas tu H3 tak boleh Maksud kamu adalah kad expanded tu tulis CH3 terus? Macam ni? Hmm. Apa apa maksud expanded tadi? Ya, yeah, expand to um, We show hmm. everything, betul? Hmm. When I say we show everything, means we show all bonds. So, boleh ke tak boleh tulis CH3 dia? Tak boleh. Okay. Thank you. Alright. So, saya nak buat yang ni. Alam-alam buat kita buat yang susah. Yang senang-senang pun boring. Setakat kamu nak, kamu nak ke saya ajar yang ni? Tak payahlah weh. Buatlah sendiri. Okay. Kita buat yang susah tu bos. Okay. So, bila kita buat yang susah, kita tengok sikit. Uh, start with the nearest carbon ataupun pick one carbon. I would say Bila dia dalam keadaan lukisan teguk macam ni, alright, buruk ya, misal benda ni. Kita akan mula dengan satu carbon yang kamu berkenan. So let's say misal start dengan carbon ni. Okay, kalau misal start dengan carbon ni. Alright. So, carbon ni sekarang adalah C, dia pegang 2 H. Okay. So, C H2, dia pegang 2 H. Carbon ini juga pegang OH. So, bracket OH. Nampak? Okay. Dah. Kalau dah, kita bergerak pula. Wait, my PowerPoint is not responding. Okay. Lepas tu, kita bergerak pula. Carbon ni sambung dengan siapa? Carbon ni sambung dengan C. This one. So, carbon ni bersambung dengan C. Alright, C yang lain. C ni pegang apa? C ni pegang H and OH sekali lagi. So, C ni pegang H. Sayang bracket OH sekali lagi. Dah. Okay. Next. Kita bergerak lagi adalah Kita tukar colour lain pula bagi kamu nampak. Carbon ni sekarang sambung dengan C ni. And this one, I want you to take a close attention. Perasan tak dia sebenarnya cyclic? Okay, dia nampak dia cyclic. Okay, so first thing dia adalah cyclic. So kita still nak mula one by one. Saya still nak mula dengan carbon ni. So this carbon right now bonded to this C. Yang duduk dalam cyclic, this carbon pegang satu H. Dan tadi dalam condense, kita patut uh, hide all the single bond. Betul? Kita kena hide all the single bond in the condense. Kecuali, okay, except in cyclic. Okay, so how can I draw the cyclic? Check. Moving up to the next carbon on top. Bergerak ke carbon ke atas. Carbon ke atas bermakna dia duduk di atas sebab dia cyclic. C. Bracket OH sebab dia pegang OH. Okay. Boleh? Boleh sambung? Carbon ni pegang lagi carbon. Alright. Dan OH. Dan dia cyclic tau. Dia bersambung. So, tunjuk cyclic dia. Carbon. Bonded to carbon. That holding OH. Show the cyclic. I will show you. We will complete the cyclic later on. Okay. Next. Carbon ni bersambung dengan C. Okay. Oh, ni tak cukup ikatan. Uh, jadikan dia double bond eh. Sorry, double bond O. Okay. So, this carbon right now, turun ke bawah, bonded to carbon that holding double bond O. Double bond boleh tunjuk. So, kita tunjuk lah. Benda yang kita boleh tunjuk, kita tunjuk. Benda yang tak boleh tunjuk, kita hilangkan. Okay. Dia kemudian turun bonded to oxygen. 
And this oxygen bonded kepada siapa tadi? Bonded to the same carbon. Dia akan pusing balik. Bonded to the first carbon in the cyclic just now. Can you see you form a cyclic? Okay. I hope you can see that you form a cyclic. And next that I want you to see is we still hide the single bond which are out of the cyclic. Single bond yang duduk di luar cyclic, kita masih akan hilangkan dia. Bila saya kata kita boleh tunjuk single bond, kita hanya boleh tunjuk single bond yang duduk dalam cyclic. Cyclic punya single bond kita boleh tunjuk. Okay. Uh, latihan saya memang susah. Yes. Exam tak pernah keluar susah yang macam saya bagi. Okay. I, I promise. Okay. But if you can do if you can do this, then you are super good. Okay. So, bergerak ke skeletal. I have, we starting from the blue part. Okay, we starting from the blue part. This is the carbon. This is the blue carbon, the carbon number one. Dia pegang apa? Dia pegang OH. Okay. Lepas tu, kita bergerak ke yang mana hijau. Carbon number dua adalah hijau. Ni carbon number dua kita. Carbon number dua pegang apa? Pegang sekali lagi OH. Are we still together? Dan kita nak masuk kepada carbon nombor tiga. Yang carbon warna orange tu. Kita nak masuk ke carbon ketiga. That is my third carbon. And the cyclic begin. So I want to draw the cyclic of five carbon. Okay. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Oxygen. So, saya punya pening. Carbon nombor tiga, carbon nombor empat. Carbon nombor lima, carbon nombor lima. Carbon nombor enam. Ada satu lagi, Miss Wong. Carbon nombor enam. That is my carbon nombor enam. Lepas tu baru pegang oksigen. Betul? Okay. Dan lengkapkan dengan apa yang dia patut ada. Carbon nombor 4 pegang OH. So masukkan OH. Carbon nombor 5 pun pegang OH. Carbon nombor 6 pegang double bond O. And then you are done. Alright. Ada soalan setakat ni? I need to charge my laptop. Ada soalan setakat ni? Still together? Alright. So, cuba buat yang lain. Okay, cuba buat yang lain. Skeletal kita dah cuba kembangkan dari awal tadi. Dari awal lagi saya dah cuba kembangkan skeletal. Uh, cuba buat yang lain and I want to remind you one thing. Do we do any reaction? Any changes of the arrangement? We only write them in a different way. Betul? The number of carbon, hydrogen, atom. Semua number of atom are the same. They are in the same arrangement, bonded to the same thing. But we write them in a different way. Remember that. That is your uh, structural formula. Okay? That is your structural formula. Kita hanya tulis dalam bentuk lain. Alright? Next. Ah, uh, yang ni senang. Classification of carbon. Ni tak boleh buat, balik tadikah. Okay, uh, nak tambah sikit. Uh, zaman dulu kita ada classification of hydrogen juga. So, saya nak ajar jugalah. Classification of carbon is very simple. Just one big, big reminder. Classification of carbon only to sp3 hybridized carbon. Dia hanya boleh berlaku pada sp3 hybridized carbon. So the question is, apa benda lah sp3 hybridized carbon? Lupa, lupa, lupa. Pernah dengar tapi macam lupa. Apa tu sp3 hybridized carbon? Anybody? Single bond. Single bond. Berapa single bond, Alif? Ha? Huh? Apa dia? Berapa single bond? Empat. SP3 hybridized carbon means carbon that have four 
single bond. Dan saya nak ingatkan, classification of carbon only can happen to the carbon that holding four single bond. In the other words, carbon yang pegang double bond, carbon yang pegang triple bond, tak kisah dia pegang dengan siapa, oksigen ke, carbon ke, tak kisah, semua tak boleh classify. Okay? Carbon yang ada double bond, carbon yang ada triple bond, semua tak boleh classify. Is that clear? Okay, so that is very important sebab yang yang ni yang akan menyebabkan kamu buat sal salah selalu. Classification of carbon is very simple. We have four different class. We have primary, alright. We have secondary, tertiary, quaternary. So apa maksud primary? Primary maksudnya the carbon, oops. My PowerPoint is keep on not responding. Anybody know why? Oh, God. Okay. Apa masuk primary? Sorry. Apa masuk primary? Primary means that the carbon that holding four bond, salah satu ikatan is bonded to another carbon. Carbon tu pegang apa saya tak kisah. If right now I want to classify this carbon, I say this carbon is a primary carbon. Label macam tu je. This carbon is a primary carbon means I only check the four bond. Tengok empat ikatan tu, berapa yang kena dengan carbon. That's it. Alright, that's it. So if you say it's a secondary, secondary means that the carbon ada empat ikatan. Secondary means dua ikatan kena pegang dengan carbon. Dan jangan tanya dah teacher, lepas tu carbon tu pegang double bond okey ke? Carbon yang sebelah dia tu pegang apa saya tak kisah. Tapi kalau saya nak classify dia dan saya kata dia adalah secondary, dia kena pegang empat single bond dan dua adalah carbon. Okey? Lepas tu carbon ni pegang apa saya tak kisah. Carbon ni pegang apa saya tak kisah. Make sense? Alright. If you want to classify that carbon, we only look at that particular carbon. That's it. Okay. So same thing. If a tertiary senang lah. Kalau dia tertiary carbon that holding four single bond. Holding three carbon next to it. Tak semestinya CH3. Dia boleh sambung lagi dengan C. Boleh sambung lagi dengan C. Boleh sambung dengan double bond. Saya tak kisah. Sebab contoh yang saya bagi tu dia CH3 tau. So dia ikutlah. Jadi dalam masalah. Miss Wong kata CH3. Aku ketuk kepala ambil saya ni. Tak ada. Alright. We only focus on that particular carbon is a tertiary because it's bonded to three carbon and that three carbon bonded to upper none of our business. Okay, makes sense. And quaternary, of course, they're bonded by the four carbon. Okay, quaternary, of course, they're bonded by the four carbon. Remember this thing because we will be go. I will be asking this in your 4.2 later. Saya akan guna structure 4.2 untuk tanya. So, ingat yang ni, kita tak akan buat latihan terus. Next, seperti yang saya janjikan, saya kata saya nak ajar classification of hydrogen juga. Betul? Senang. Kalau saya bagi structure like this, a very simple and quick structure. If I have a CH3, C, CH3, C, double bond O, CH3. 3 CH3 and CH2 CH3. Okay. Just worry very quickly. Kita go through sikit. Uh, Mr. Lim dah duk tengok dah. Alright. Just one quick thing. This carbon right now, what class? Alia? Yes, miss. This carbon, what class? Primary. This carbon is a primary studio class. Okay. Next. Uh, this carbon. Amira? Quaternary. Quaternary. Anis? This carbon? Tertiary. Honey? This carbon?
Ani? Untuk komen secondary. Secondary. Anybody else? Setuju dengan Hani? Secondary? Tak kira. Kenapa tak kira Alif? Sebab double bond. Remember syarat kita yang pertama? Dia mesti pegang empat single bond. So dia tak boleh classify. Okay? And from here, I want to move to the classification of hydrogen. Okay? How do we classify hydrogen? Senang ke? Kalau hydrogen ini, kalau hydrogen ini duduk pada primary carbon. Okay, hydrogen ni primary carbon punya kan? Okay, hydrogen ni primary carbon punya. Automatically, semua hydrogen ni adalah primary hydrogen. Dia lagi senang berbanding carbon. Alright, dia lagi senang berbanding carbon. Kalau kita kata hydrogen ni, sekarang, duduk dengan tertiary carbon. Dia duduk dengan tertiary carbon. Automatically dia adalah tertiary hydrogen. Nampak? Okay. So, the class of hydrogen depends on carbon that it attached to. Alright. So, Saya tak pasti ada, saya tak pasti dia akan tanya ke tak lagi pun. Tapi Lulu memang dia ada tanya lah. Alright. Dia Lulu dia pernah tanya dan saya ajar je lah. Senang je pun. Okay. Dah. Ada masalah classification of carbon? Ada masalah nak tulis lukis-lukis tadi? Alright. Lukis-lukis tadi make sure kira carbon hydrogen semua dengan betul lah. Itu je. Tak buat reaction apa lagi sayang. Kita main lukis-lukis tulis-tulis je. Okay. Apa tak rasa susun best ke weh? Soalan dah bagi dah bilangan karbon, hidrogen, oksigen dah susun dah patuhan lukis balik eh. Kan tak rasa ke kalau tak boleh buat rasa macam salin pun tak lepas. Ha macam tu cerita dia. Ha okay. Dan the only thing that you do most adalah kira 1, 2, 3, 4. Betul? And tak boleh kira 1, 2, 3, 4 and kimia susah. Ha. Aku nak buat macam mana lagi? Okay. It's very simple. Alright, it's very simple. Next, we are going into a functional group. 4.2 and homologous series. Okay. At this beginning, alright, at this beginning in this 30 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, I think, I will be saying that you need to memorize. But we will be learning all the functional group, especially the homologous series, alright? We will be learning every single homologous series as one chapter in the future. Okay, maksud teacher. Kita akan belajar alkin sebagai satu topik nanti. Okay, kita akan belajar alkohol phenol sebagai satu topik nanti. Halo alkin pun akan jadi satu topik. So, sekarang, pada masa ini, kamu akan rasa kamu kena hafal. Banyak kena hafal. Ada banyak, 15. 7 chapter kan? Kita ada 7 chapter lagi kan? So, kita ada 15 fun homologous series and functional group that you need to memorize. At this moment, I will use the word memorize. But later on, when you start learning that functional group as one topic, then you should be very good already. Sayang, bila satu minggu, tiga jam atau lebih daripada tiga jam, kamu belajar alkohol je. Takkan Han tak kenal OH to alcohol. Betul? Kalau dalam satu minggu kita belajar COOH carboxylic acid. Awak tak kenal lagi carboxylic acid tu COOH. You get what I mean? Alright. Eventually benda ni kamu tak payah hafal. Tapi at this moment duka cita dimaklumkan you need to memorize a little. Okay. Kita akan masuk pada soalan banyak. Cuma kat sini saya nak ajar very quickly just briefly go through apa yang kita ada je lah. So we have the first one is alkene. Saya nak kamu nampak beza homologous series dengan functional group. Oh, by the way, apa beza homologous series dengan functional group? Very quickly. Functional group, group that give identity. Okay. Dia adalah a group of atom, alright. They are a group of atom or atom that will give identity to your compound. Okay. Homologous series, over here, homologous series is compound, alright? 
compound ataupun O compound. O compounds, many compounds. Alright. That I think because my laptop has been working non-stop for 48 hours. I was having my master exam last weekend and and yeah, this laptop has been working non-stop. So my PowerPoint is just horrible. A lot of compound, many compound that have the same functional group. Okay, bila saya kata dia ada same functional group, bermaknanya dia pegang same identity. Okay, contoh. An example of functional group that you might always come across is alcohol, uh, OH, hydroxyl. So, apa homologous series? CH3, OH masih adalah alcohol. Betul? CH3, CH2, CH2, OH masih adalah alcohol. Oh, tak suka straight chain nak cyclic lah. Cyclic pegang OH masih adalah alcohol. Sebab tu saya kata homologous series is compounds that have the same functional group and the same identity. Diorang memegang kumpulan yang sama. Dan kenapa kita boleh panggil, kenapa kamu panggil dia alcohol? Macam mana kamu tahu dia adalah alcohol? Sebab dia pegang OH group. Sebab tu OH group is a group that give rise to the identity. Alright? Kumpulan yang memberi identity, that is functional group. They all are under the same homologous series. Faham? Okay, boleh ya? Eh? So, homologous series adalah satu keluarga yang besar. Okay, homologous series is a big family. Dalam keluarga yang besar itu, pegang satu identity yang sama. Make sense? Okay, that is the simplest way. Ayat baca sendiri dalam nota, macam biasa. Okay, saya tak baca dah lah. Dan, dan yang paling-paling penting, do you realize they have different name? Oh, that is the most important thing. Alright, that is the most important thing. Yang kamu belajar sebelum ni, alcohol, carboxylic acid, alkene, alkane, betul? Alright, yang kamu belajar sebelum ni adalah homologous series. Alkene, alright, alcohol, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid di, di belakang, alright, ester yang kamu belajar sebelum ni is under homologous series. Sekarang yang kita nak tengok dan saya nak kamu tengok adalah siapa yang memberi identiti kepada kumpulan ini. Alright, so functional group for alkene is carbon-carbon double bond. Dan yang saya bagi kat depan adalah spelling yang betul. Saya dah double check dengan nota saya. Nota saya pun betul. Kalau ada salah, bagi tahu. Okay? Dan this is the shortest answer that I can accept. In the other words, saya tak terima yang ni sebagai jawapan. Okay? Tiap-tiap tahun akan ada manusia yang tulis. Kalau saya boleh tulis C double bond C, saya tulis dah. Kalau saya tulis carbon, carbon double bond bermakna C double bond C tu kita tak terima. Okay? So the structure that give rise to the carbon-carbon double bond is your C double bond C. That is the structure that we are looking for. Okay, that is the structure that we are looking for. Alkyne is your carbon-carbon triple bond. Carbon-carbon triple bond is your C triple bond C. That is the structure that we are looking for. Okay. Next, benzene ring. Benzene ring is a six carbon ring with three double bond alternate each other. That is benzene ring. So, soalan teacher, adakah yang ni benzene ring? No eh, they are not benzene ring. Tunjuk siap-siap sebab soalan ada nanti. Okay, no it's not. Okay, benzene ring is a six carbon ring with three double bond alternate each other. Okay, mesti alternate bersilang each other. Alright, berselang bukan bersilang. Okay, next, saya ada homologous series alcohol. Functional group dia adalah hydroxyl. Pay attention on the spelling XYL. 
Okay. Sebab tak ada, ada L dengan tak ada L membawa makna yang berbeza. Kita akan belajar apa beza dia dalam chapter alkohol nanti. Alright. Bila masa ada L, bila masa tak ada L membawa beza. Dan functional group adalah X, Y, L. And the structure, obviously, O, H. This is the structure that we are looking for in alcohol. That uh, This is the hydroxyl group that we are looking for in the alcohol. Okay. And phenol, next, is probably the only one, the only one that we learn our in our syllabus, which the homologous series pegang dua functional group. This is very special. All right, the, fun the homologous series, phenol, is a benzene ring directly bonded to a OH. So, the entire compound, the entire compound over here adalah phenol. Kalau homologous series, kita akan bulatkan semua ni. Tapi kalau kita hanya bulatkan OH, dia akan adalah functional group. Hydroxyl, dia adalah benzene ring. Nampak? Okay. Then I use the word directly bonded. Betul? So, I have question. Saya suka tunjuk yang salah. Sebab saya nak nampak, saya nak kamu nampak dia salah. Is this still phenol? No. Alif say no. Alif awak sedihnya semua. No, okay. It's not phenol because there is a carbon in between. Nampak? Alright, so berhati-hati tau. Soalan saya boleh berubah dengan masukkan satu carbon yang hampa tak pernah nak kisah dalam hidup hampa tu. Ah, so sila kisah pasal carbon tu sekarang. Okay, next. Halo alkin. Halo alkin, the functional group is halogen. Halogen ada empat. Uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Semua duduk di bawah halogen. Okay, semua duduk di bawah halogen. Mana-mana uh, satu pun boleh. Next. Spelling. Saya ada homologous series ether. The functional group is alkoxy. Perasan? Sebab tu saya cakap spelling, spelling, spelling. Alright? Be very careful with your spelling. Alkoxy means C, single bond O, single bond C. Dia kena duduk di antara carbon dan carbon. That is our alkoxy. Okay. That is our alkoxy. Next. If you look at our homologous series, both of them, aldehyde ketone. Benda berbeza betul? Aldehyde ketone. Nampak gila lah benda berbeza. Nama pun berbeza. But look at the functional group, guys. The functional group is carbonyl. Carbonyl. Bermakna functional group dia sama tau. Functional group carbonyl look like this. If you ask me, teacher, what is carbonyl? This is carbonyl. C double bond O. That is carbonyl. That's it. Carbonyl itulah dia. Okay. But what makes this carbonyl different in aldehyde and ketone? That is carbonyl. And anybody can tell me what's the difference? Apa beza aldehyde dengan kita? Hujung. Uh, uh, Hujung tu maksud apa, Alif? Uh, dekat hujung. Hujung structure. Tak hujung structure. Okay. Apa... Macam mana kita nak tahu si double bond O tu duduk di hujung structure? Ada hidrogen. Alia? Dia ada hidrogen. Yes. How do we know that this an aldehyde is the C double bond O must be bonded directly to one hydrogen. Okay. Uh, Alif kata tadi, oh, kalau dalam aldehyde, C double bond O kena duduk hujung. Macam mana kita tahu dia hujung? Dia hujung sebab dia dah tak ada carbon sebelah dia. Betul? 
bila dah tak ada carbon masuk dia, the C double bond O, one of the bond in the C double bond O must be bonded directly to a H. Mesti, kiri kanan atas bawah saya tak kisah tapi dia kena pegang satu H. Next, in the ketone, vice versa. C double bond O, the carbonyl, must be sitting in between carbon. Dia mesti tak boleh duduk di hujung. Kiri kanan dia mesti adalah carbon. Carbon tu macam mana saya tak kisah. The carbon holding single bond, double bond, whatsoever, we don't care. Alright, we care that the carbon is in between the C double bond O. Okay, boleh nampak beza? Alright, dan kena boleh beza. Alright, kena boleh beza. Next, as I promised, we have 15 of them and I think we have 6 more. Okay, so carboxyl acid and carboxyl again, uh, I want you to check the spelling XYL. Alright, carboxyl adalah XYL and the structure is very simple, C double bond O, O, H. Ataupun most of the time, we will be writing as C, O, O, H. Benda yang sama. Okay, you should know this. Alright. Ester. The homologous series of ester functional group adalah carboalkoxy. Guys, it's only one word. Carboalkoxy, no spacing. Done. Nampak dah tak ada L? Okay. Spelling, spelling, spelling. So, bila ada, bila masa ada L, siapa ada L, siapa tak ada L. Pay attention. And it's a one word. Carbo alkoxy. O dengan A tak ada space. And ester represent C double bond O. O. C. Again, kiri kanan apa saya tak kisah. Tapi yang saya nak adalah C double bond O ini bonded directly to a C. Okay. Dah. Soalan saya, adakah dia masih carboalkoxy if is like this? Why not? Why not? Anis, why not? Uh, ada C surplus C. Surplus double I. Bila kita kata directly bonded, when I give you the structure, if you look at the structure that I give to you, when I say the C double bond O holding C single bond O C, sayang perasan tak carbon yang sama? Carbon yang sama kena pegang double bond O, carbon yang sama kena pegang single bond O C. Okay? Alright? Sama juga di bawah asil chloride dua perkataan. Asil chloride is C double bond O C L. Alright? Hanya C L. Tak ada asil lain. Hanya C L. Perasan tak? Carbon yang sama pegang double bond O, carbon yang sama pegang C L. Alright? Sebab bila saya bagi soalan dalam exam, saya akan bagi contoh soalan nanti. Nampak tak struktur saya macam ni? Weh? Soalan exam akan keluar struktur like this. Alright? Bila soalan exam keluar structure like this, you need to pay very close attention to the connection. Ada carbon atau tak ada carbon? Are they directly bonded? Alright, you will come across a question like this. Are they directly bonded? Okay, so be very careful when I say they must be directly bonded. Okay, they must be bonded to the same carbon, the same carbon holding both of them. Alright, and last but not least, Dua ni adalah satu topik nanti. Your amide homologous series and your amine homologous series. Amide is your carbox amide. Sekali lagi. One word. Betul? Carbox bukan carbo. Tadi adalah carbo. Perasan tak tadi adalah carbo alkoxy. Betul? Alright, sekarang adalah carbox amide. Jangan tanya saya kenapa nama dia berbeza. Saya tak tahu kalau saya buat, saya jadikan dia semua wong cinting. Alright, saya minta maaf. Sebab tu saya nak highlight kat situ. Saya nak kamu nampak beza tu. Just now, it was carbo alkoxy only. And now, similar thing but carbox amide. What is carbox amide? The carbon double bond O, still double bond O but holding directly to N. 
and I stop, ladies and gentlemen, I stop at N. Remember, nitrogen can have maximum three bond. Uh, yes, I tell you now, okay? Nitrogen can have maximum three bond, all right? Uh, if the nitrogen is neutral, if the nitrogen having charged different story, okay? If a neutral nitrogen, dia boleh pegang tiga ikatan. Dan adakah kita kata tiga ikatan tu mesti adalah hydrogen? No. Sebab tu saya berhenti D, that's why I stop at this. Saya tak letak apa tau. The carbox amide is this thing. The carbon that holding double bond O holding N. And the N can be hydrogen, can be CH3. Tak suka hydrogen, it can be CH2, CH2, CH3. Depends on the question, saya tak kisah. Betul? Alright. So what I mean over here, jangan tengok yang belakang. Saya tak kisah yang belakang tu apa. Yang saya kisah my carbon double bond O right now. Okay, carbon yang pegang double bond O is also bonded to N. Yang tu saya kisah. The N bonded with what? I don't really care. The same thing in the amine and the functional group amino. The functional group amino, if I'm going to draw it, I will only draw this. And what I give the example of NH2. Is that the nitrogen must be holding to NH2 only? No. The amino is actually the N. Okay. And the N boleh pegang apa? Dia boleh pegang cyclic. Uh, cyclic yang buruk, minta maaf. Dia boleh pegang hydrogen. Dia boleh pegang carbon, 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 carbon. Right? Saya tak kisah dia pegang apa. Yang saya kisah, nitrogen wujud. Nampak? Okay. Boleh? And sino? Sino functional group, simple. C triple bond N ataupun most of the time you will come across as CN. Okay? All right. Question so far? No? Okay. Kita ada lima structure dalam exam, dalam nota kamu. And I want to discuss in your exercise 4.2.1. I want to discuss this. B, I think. And how do we answer in the exam? That's the problem with that. How do I want to answer in the exam? You need to duka cita dimaklumkan sekali lagi. Han kena lukis balik benda ni. Alright, kamu tak boleh jawab atas kertas soalan sebab kertas soalan takkan dipulangkan. Okay, melainkan kertas soalan dipulangkan. Kalau kertas soalan tak dipulangkan, kamu kena salin balik dan kamu kena lukis balik sebelum kamu jawab. Dan cara jawab adalah senang. Perasan tak tadi masa saya ajar, saya duduk guna highlighter dan saya bulat. Saya keep on bulatkan, betul? So what are we going to do now also the same? We are going to circle and label. Alright, we are going to circle and label. Dan untuk structure yang pegang banyak kumpulan like this, untuk structure yang pegang banyak gila functional group like this, 90.99.99999% dia hanya boleh tanya functional group. Dia takkan tanya homologous series. Okay, saya akan tunjuk contoh soalan homologous series nanti. Okay. So, how do we answer? Okay, how do we answer? The first one. Anybody can give me the first one? What do you see? What functional group do you see? Anyone? Siapa cepat dia dapat yang senang lah. Come on, quick. Alcohol. Alcohol. Uh, soalan saya functional group sayang. Hydroxyl. Hydroxyl yang mana sayang? Yang OH. So what do we do in the exam? Kamu dah lukis balik dalam kertas jawapan. Kamu bulatkan OH. Kamu label terus hydroxyl. Nampak? Next. Lagi? Carbon-carbon triple bond. Alright. Amira nampak carbon-carbon triple bond. So I have a C triple bond C over here. And that just circle and label. Drag and label. Carbon, carbon, 
triple bond. Itu sahaja. Alright. Next. Apa lagi yang kamu nampak? Halo RK. Halo RK. Hey, 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 hey. Hai. Halo uh, Jun. Halo Jun. Halo Jun yang mana sayang? BR. BR. Kita hanya bulatkan BR. Dan kita label halogen. Functional group ya. Functional group. Boleh beza nama. Make sure kamu boleh beza nama tu. Lagi? Carbonyl. Carbonyl. Where is the carbonyl? At the right side. Left right side. The C double bond O. Betul? That is my carbonyl. We are asking for functional group. So, saya hanya perlu carbonyl. Saya tak perlu tahu dia aldehyde atau ketul. Okay. Lagi? Carboxamide. Carboxamide adalah siapa, Amira? C double, double bond O N. The C double bond O N. That is our carbox amide. Alright. Lagi? Come on guys. Carboxy. Oh yeah? Carboalkoxy. Carboalkoxy is which one? C double bond O O. C double bond O O. Okay. Untuk yang ni, kenapa saya nak bincang soalan ni? Uh, benda ni pernah keluar dalam exam tapi ikut syllabus dia memang tak ada tapi dia pernah keluar exam. When you are holding a C double bond O, single bond O, C double bond O connected like this. Terikat bersambung eh. Terikat bersambung. It's not a carboalkoxy or a carbonyl. Dia akan terus jadi acid anhydride. Okay. Ni benda baru. Uh, let me write the spelling correctly. Acid anhydride. Okay. Uh, saya tak ada dalam jadual saya. Tak ada dalam jadual saya memang tak ada. Tapi dia pernah keluar dalam exam. So send aja. Okay. Acid anhydride. Lagi? Ada lagi. Um, benzene ring. Benzene ring. Your friend say benzene ring. Do we have benzene ring? Do we have benzene no. ring? No. So, kalau yang tu bukan benzene ring, uh, Alif, yang tu apa sayang? Carbon, carbon double bond. Saya nak ingatkan, uh, benzene ring adalah carbon enam. Tiga double bond berselang. Adakah dia sama? Tak. This thing is only your carbon-carbon double bond. Alright. Lagi? Acyl chloride. Apa masalah dengan acyl chloride? Tak nak jawab tu. Uh, sebab dia tak tunjuk C double bond O tu. How do I know that this is a C double bond O? Because the carbon have not enough bond. Alright, so the COCl is actually a C double bond OCl. Okay, that is your acyl chloride. Okay, oh, spelling salah. That is our acyl chloride. Okay, senang. Alright, nampak cara nak jawab? So, sama juga kat sini bila kamu ada structure yang lain. So, what do we, you do is you basically are going to copy them and you're going to uh, label them. That's it. Okay? Uh, Adam? Yes? For the previous slide, the carbonyl one, uh, do we need to circle along the H? Because there are two types of carbonyl. All right. If the question, the question is only asking functional group, right? So, I told you from the beginning, uh, functional group carbonyl is actually the C double bond O only. So, no need. Okay, no need. Alright. And soalan functional group yang akan keluar is 
something like this kalau dia nak tanya functional group sahajalah. Okay, kalau dia nak tanya functional group sahaja. Dan yang saya bagi memang yang besar dan susah lah. Soalan exam saya rasa dia lebih kurang size macam ni je. Okay, A standard soalan yang dia akan keluar adalah mungkin dalam uh, tiga atau empat functional group maksimum. Lima pun sangat jarang saya rasa. Okay, cuma saya nak ingatkan satu kamu kena lukis balik. Saya tak nak kamu bagi jawapan, oh dia ada alkoxi. So kamu pun label alkoxi. Lepas tu dia ada benzene ring. Kamu label dia benzene ring. Oh saya tak nak jawapan ni. Ni kita tak terima langsung. So bila soalan functional group keluar, dia always adalah circle and label. Always. Itu teknik menjawab dia. Okay. Even though soalan hanya kata name the functional group present. Han bila soalan kata name the functional group present, Han jangan jawab macam ni weh. Siapa alkoxi? Siapa benzene ring? Memang tak akan dapat markah. Okay. So kamu kena salin balik, kamu kena bulatkan dan label. Dan lab, bulatkan dan label exactly like what I do. That's it. Tak payah. Tak payah nak label elok-elok. Tak payah nak segi tiga semua. Nak nak segi empat. Nak line tarik pembaris. Tak payah. Label je. Okay. Label dan aja betul lah. Alright. Kamu hilang satu huruf pun kita akan perasan. Okay. I want you to remember one thing. We, I am trained, me and my colleagues, my fellow colleagues, we are trained to identify your mistake. So jangan rasa alah, hilang satu L dengan tak hilang satu L. Teacher tak nampak ah. Carbox amide dengan carbo amide. Miss Wan tak perasan ah. Oh, try me. Okay, try me. Don't do that. Okay. What will be the question of homologous series? Soalan yang akan keluar untuk tanya homologous series will be something like this. Where in the structure, you only have one functional group. Okay, and you can name the homologous series. So from here, we can put down the name of homologous series straight away very quickly. So, dia pegang OH. Dia pegang OH. So straight away, saya tahu dia alcohol. Betul? Nampak? Nampak beza nama dia? Tadi OH bukan alcohol. Tadi OH adalah hydroxyl. Nampak? Okay, kita, tadi kita tengok balik yang kita ada. Tadi kita ada carbox amide. Tapi bila carbox amide tanya homologous series, benda ni panggil amide. Perasan? Okay. And then over here, homologous series, pakcik ni adalah phenol. Alright, yang lain kamu boleh buat ada ke yang pelik? Tak ada. Yang lain kamu boleh buat senang je. That is my ester. Okay. And I don't know yet whether you realize or not at this point. Do you realize that the functional group name is always longer? Functional group name yang selalunya adalah this one. Betul? Alright. Yang panjang sikit, lepas tu dia ada XY, L, XY yang tu adalah functional group. Homologous series biasa satu huruf je, nama pendek je. Amide, phenol, alcohol, ester, ether, that is your homologous series. So make sure kamu boleh beza nama dia. Okay? Boleh? Alright, boleh buat kan? Senang eh? And in homologous series, much easier sebab tak payah bulat. Nampak tak? Saya tak bulatkan. Saya hanya label je. Oh, saya nampak ada CL. Ada CL. Bermakna dia adalah halo alkin. Saya hanya label je. Okay. Saya tak perlu bulat. Nampak beza cara jawab? Okay. Boleh eh? Alright. Uh, like I say, at this beginning point, you somehow need to memorize. Okay. You somehow need to memorize. But eventually when we learn this thing as one whole topic, one whole topic, you will know what is OH, you will know what is halo alkin. Okay, kamu akan boleh nampak. So at this moment, for this one month, saya rasa untuk UPS 2 kot, kamu kena hafal dulu lah. Okay, tapi bila sampai UPS 3, sampai final, benda ni petik jari je. You'll be learning this as one whole chapter later on. Each and every one of them. So no worries. Okay. And next, I want to go in a bit using this structure. Oh no. Using this structure. Can I ask the carbon? How many carbon that I can classify in here? Oh. How many carbon that I can classify in here? Banyak carbon. 
Tapi adakah semua kita boleh klasifikasi? Tiga saja. Alif kata tiga saja. Yang lain setuju? Tiga, Alif kata tiga, yang lain setuju eh? Okey, saya soalan saya. Dalam tiga tu, berapa adalah primary, berapa adalah secondary, berapa adalah tertiary, berapa adalah quaternary? Ada primary? Ada. Ada primary, Alia kata ada primary. Berapa primary, Alia? One. One. Berapa secondary class? Two. Two. Okay. Berapa tertiary? Tak ada. Berapa quaternary? Zero. Semua setuju kah? Amira setuju Amira. Ifan? Ifan Alia kata satu primary, dua secondary. Ifan setuju kah? Setuju. Ifan setuju. Primary tu duduk kat mana Ifan? Ifan setuju je dia tak tengok pun sebenarnya. And I think the three carbon that you can classify is this three. Kenapa yang lain semua tak boleh? Sebab yang lain semua pegang double bond. Betul? Yang lain semua pegang double bond sebab tu dia tak boleh classify. Kita nampak dah dengan jelas. All of them holding double bond. That's why the rest of the carbon cannot be classified. So anybody disagree with Alia answer? Saya disagree. Long? Agree, disagree? Disagree. What What is your answer? Three secondary. Lau getting three secondary. So, two secondary or three secondary? Alia? Yang lain? Three. Three. First and foremost, let's look at this one. Carbon is sekarang, alright, this carbon holding one carbon, two carbon. So, they're secondary lah. Next, this carbon, alright, berpegang pada carbon, berpegang pada carbon. Another secondary. This carbon, sepintas lalu, nampak macam tertiary, betul? Tapi, Dia ada tiga ikatan. Tapi adakah tiga-tiga ikatan tu carbon? Tak. Yang ni hydrogen. Tak ambil kira. Sorry. Dia nitrogen. Tak ambil kira. So dia ambil kira carbon. Dia ambil kira carbon. So carbon, carbon. So carbon ni secondary Alia. Therefore, will be zero primary and three secondary and zero tertiary and quaternary. Uh, zero uh, zero carbon of quaternary carbon. Okay. So, soalan classification of carbon ada dua jenis. Satu, indicate and label. Indicate and label is like this. Kamu tulis atas tu terus. Siapa secondary, siapa tertiary. That is indicate and label. Satu lagi adalah identify. Okay. Dia suruh identify the class of carbon. Identify primary carbon, secondary carbon, tertiary carbon, quaternary carbon. Bermakna dia nak jumlah. Nampak beza? Bermakna dia nak jumlah. Okay. So, berhati-hati dengan soalan. Disebabkan ada manusia jawab salah. 
this one. Ni semua soalan dalam nota kamu. Ni uh, dalam buku kamu exercise functional group tadi. Dan ni. I want identify. I want the total number of primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbon. Dan yang tak kena panggil lagi. Sila bersedia. Dah. Weh, main kira-kira je weh. Ni benda paling senang ni keluar. Nabilah. Berapa primary, uh, berapa carbon yang boleh Declassify. Nabila. Tujuh. Nabila kata tujuh. Ada orang lain? Ada orang lain? Ifan, berapa carbon yang boleh declassify? Nabila kata tujuh. Ifan? Saya dapat tujuh juga. Tujuh juga. Okey. Ifan, berapa primary? Ifan dapat berapa primary kalau Ifan kata tujuh? Bila you all akan balik college? Uh, dapat empat. empat. Ifan kata dapat empat primary. Cop six, seriously, with classification of carbon je apa yang susah. Bila, bila balik college? Bila pas ni Sam. Misam tu bila? Misam break bila? Berapa lama lagi? Berapa lama lagi aku akan mengajar dalam keadaan yang pun nak bagi respon dan kira carbon pun tak betul? Organik ni aku menyampah pun bila ajar online. Sebab aku tak boleh nak ketuk depan tu. Organic is something that you need to do. You know, you cannot look at it. You need to do. You need to pick up your pen. You need to do and you need to write. Because there are so many things but they are very simple. And I think we have eight carbon that we can classify. Betul? I have one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the rest of the carbon yang tak boleh classify sebab dia double bond. Kat sini double bond. Semua ni double bond. Dan yang ni kita tak boleh classify because the carbon is not bonded to any carbon. So yang ni pun kita tak boleh classify. So I have eight carbon in total. And class, how many primary do I have? Four. Four. Primary. Seriously? Ada jawapan lain? Tak nak bagi jawapan, tak payah bagi. Move on. Next question in your tutorial. Is you need to draw. That is the, this is the time that you come in and draw the structural formula. 
But if you look at the question, the question only asked you to draw structural formula, but the question did not, all right, the question did not request for expanded condensed or skeletal. Bila dia hanya minta skeletal, dia hanya minta structural formula tapi dia tak cakap dia nak yang mana, kamu boleh lukis yang mana-mana ataupun kamu boleh campur. Kecuali kamu tak boleh hanya lukis skeletal. Kamu tak boleh hanya lukis skeletal sebab skeletal tidak menunjukkan bilangan hidrogen kamu. Okay. Kecuali ring lah. Ring kita boleh lukis uh, skeletal. Tapi bila dia lukis biasanya kita akan campur antara expanded dengan condensed. Apa maksud campur? So if the question A, how do we start is, question A I say, the question say a ketone and two aldehyde when I have C4H8. How do I start? How do I start drawing the ketone? How do I start drawing the ketone? Kenapa class of carbon pun boleh salah? Huh? Seriously, four primary. You can't even calculate how many carbon is bonded to that particular carbon. And you give me four primary for the second time. That is a freaking primary. Because this carbon is bonded to one carbon. That is a carbon. This is also a primary because this carbon is bonded to one carbon and another bond is bonded to oxygen. So dia pun primary. Fine. And what's the rest of the primary that you say? Where's the other primary? Oh, did I miss it? Yang dekat N tu. This one. Okay, it's a primary. That is a secondary. Secondary quaternary. Betul? Dan kenapa dapat tujuh je tadi? Satu lagi hilang kat mana, Ifan? Satu lagi hilang kat mana, Ifan? Saya selalu tengok kat yang quaternary. Kenapa tak buka webcam? Kamera rosak. Where are you? Uh, home. At home. You're using phone or you're using, you're using laptop or what? Laptop. Next time masuk dengan phone kamu satu lagi because I believe you have wifi at home, do you? Ah uh, yes. So going into two devices is not problem. So use your phone for your uh, webcam. I want to see you now. And yang lain oh. pun sama. Aina, kenapa tak buka webcam dan tak bersuara? Nabila, I've been calling you but you never reply. Kawan kamu yang lain tak masuk tu not to mention. Ketone, how do we start? Is we always start with the functional group of the ketone or the, what do we call that? Homologous series of the ketone. I have four carbon, eight hydrogen and one oxygen. And knowing that ketone is a C double bond O bonded directly to carbon. I will start off with what I have on the screen. And then knowing that I have C4H8O, I already used three carbon. So I left with one carbon. I already used one oxygen. So I left with zero oxygen. Dan kita masih ada lapan hydrogen lagi boleh digunakan. Kita mesti kena start dengan apa yang kita nak. Lepas kita dah lukis apa yang kita nak, then kita boleh letak carbon tu kat mana-mana sahaja. Sebab soalan tak cakap dia nak macam mana. So saya letaklah carbon tu di kiri atau kanan. It doesn't matter. I just chuck in my carbon. So I'm done with the carbon. I already done with the oxygen from beginning. Okay. And then I have egg hydrogen to go. And the egg hydrogen is the only egg hydrogen that we can use. In the other words, Kamu kena masukkan dengan lengkap dan tepat. Dan this is the time that you need to count your 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon pertama, you already hold one bond. So carbon pertama ada tiga lagi ikatan. That is my hydrogen. Carbon kedua, 
Dah cukup satu, dua, tiga, empat ikatan. Okay. Next, carbon ketiga. Saya ada satu, dua ikatan. So, dia pegang dua lagi hidrogen. Masukkan dua hidrogen tu. Dan if you remember just now I say the question asked for structural formula but did not ask for expanded or condensed or whatsoever. So, saya kata kita boleh campur. Apa maksud campur? Kita tak perlu expand semua kalau kamu boleh nampak. Alright. Kenapa saya boleh campur expanded dengan condensed? Sebab soalan tak cakap dia nak apa. Soalan hanya suruh lukis. Unless the question say draw the uh, following formula in expanded form. Dan lain. Dan semua kena lukis dalam expanded. Alright. Write the condensed formula. Then everything need to be in condensed. Different story. Okay. Next, I have one ketone. I have two aldehyde. So when I have two aldehyde, how do I start with the aldehyde? I will start off with what aldehyde represent. C double bond O, H. I will represent with that straight away. Knowing that I have four carbon, eight hydrogen, one oxygen. Oxygen dah selesai. Carbon dah guna satu, tinggal tiga. Hydrogen dah guna satu, tinggal tujuh. So, I have another three carbon. So, where do I put? Satu tempat je. Sambunglah. Carbon. Dah guna satu lagi. Dua. Tiga. That is my three carbon. Done. I have seven hydrogen left. So, you can put in your seven hydrogen correctly when you count one, two, three, four. Carbon pertama dah pegang satu ikatan. So, dia pegang tiga lagi ikatan like this. Carbon kedua, how many hydrogen needed? Two. Two. Carbon ketiga? Dua. Dua. And you have your three, four, five, six, seven. Done. And if you realize, the one yang akan menyebabkan kamu salah, is actually the hydrogen that you don't bother to calculate. Pelajar akan selalu kira carbon and oxygen ataupun atom lain. Kalau dia bagi chlorine, dia bagi nitrogen, yang tu kamu akan pay attention. Tapi pelajar akan selalu letak je hydrogen ikut suka aku. Yang tu akan menyebabkan kamu salah. And the moment kamu terlebih atau terkurang satu hydrogen, the entire structure that you draw will be wrong. Carbon tak boleh pegang lebih atau kurang hydrogen. Bilangan hydrogen kena betul. Okay. So make sure the first habit that you have into yourself is not only checking the carbon, it's also checking the hydrogen. So I have, I need to have the second aldehyde. The second aldehyde, I will still start off with a C double bond OH. Sama, saya ada C8H, sorry. C4H8O. Oksigen dah guna, hidrogen dah guna satu, karbon dah guna satu. So, tiga lagi nak susun mana, macam mana? Saya tak boleh susun straight dah. Betul? Sebab kalau susun straight, dia akan sama je. So, what do we do? Kita letakkan dia sebagai cabang. Do you realize that? Tadi, tiga karbon adalah straight. Sekarang, tiga karbon adalah cabang. Okay, and then we put in the hydrogen and we check we have seven more hydrogen to go. So, carbon yang paling kiri, berapa hydrogen? Carbon tengah, berapa hydrogen? One. Carbon bawah, berapa hydrogen? Three. Sorry? Three. Dua ke tiga? Tak dengar. How many? Tiga. Thank you. And you realize that the seven hydrogen or the eight hydrogen in total even adalah satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, lapan. Dan... Bilangan yang dia bagi, C4H8 yang dia bagi, 
tak boleh lebih, tak boleh kurang. Bila dia bagi C4H8, dia mesti adalah C4H8. Okay. Same thing, bila kita lukis untuk orang lain, siapa lagi yang susah? Soalan mana lagi yang susah? Hmm, tak ada apa. Cuma balik cuba buat. Okay. I have 15 more minutes. Okay, balik cuba buat. Sama juga cara nak buat adalah always start with the functional group. Always start with the functional group. For example, carboxylic acid kena pegang C double bond O, OH. Always start with this thing. Lepas tu tengoklah, oh saya ada berapa carbon yang tinggal dan kita susun lain. Okay, cuba buat semua soalan ni and then we will discuss again on Wednesday and you'll show me your answer. Okay, you'll show me your answer. Try to do it. Sama juga dengan yang functional group tadi. Semua functional group ini, saya nak classification of carbon as well. Semua functional group, so semua soalan functional group, saya nak classification of carbon as well. Next, 15 minutes, I will only teach the... Basic, we won't do any exercise. So I'll teach you what is isomerism, okay? You go and try the exercise and we will discuss further on Wednesday. Isomerism, very, very much different from your structural formula. Kalau tadi structural formula semua sama, kita cara tulis je lain, betul? Kat sini, the only things that is same is the molecular formula. If you remember what is molecular formula is that just now C4H8 C uh, sorry C5H10O okay this is molecular formula but in isomerism you will have a different arrangement okay you need to have a different arrangement all right what is mean by different arrangement saya bagi Sangat-sangat simple. Kalau saya pegang C4H8. Okay. Saya boleh ada susunan CH3, CH2 double bond, CH2, CH3. Sorry. Double bond CH, CH3. Dan teacher boleh susun dalam bentuk lain. CH2 double bond CH, CH2, CH3. Sayang, look at these two structure. Are they the same structure? Kenapa dia berbeza? Apa yang berbeza? Kedudukan carbon. Kedudukan double bond. Double bond. Betul. Kedudukan double bond berbeza kat sini. Bila kedudukan double bond berbeza, that means they are different compound. But look at, uh, compare with the structural formula that we learned. Miss Wong sekarang tulis dia orang, dua-dua saya tulis dalam bentuk condense tau. Dua-dua dalam bentuk condense. Tapi dia orang benda yang berbeza sebab dia orang susunan yang berbeza. Kalau kamu ingat balik dalam structural formula tadi, bila kita tulis structural formula, I told you in structural formula, they must not only have the same molecular formula, they also must have the same arrangement. Diorang disusun sama. Betul? Alright? But in isomerism, it's different. Isomerism, we are talking about arrangement. Okay? In isomerism, we are talking about arrangement. We are going to have different arrangement. Okay? And bila kita ada different arrangement, is this. A phenomenon where you have different compound with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. Saya nak bagi contoh lagi. Kalau teacher ada C4 uh, juga, tapi H10. Nak lukis yang single bond pula. So, saya boleh ada CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Alright, dia adalah C4H10. Saya boleh ada CH3, CH. CH3, CH3. 
Cuba kira carbon dengan hidrogen. Cukup tak empat dengan sepuluh untuk kedua-dua? Agree? So, they have the same molecular formula, which is C4H10. But, but, a very big but over here, but they are different compound. Because this is your butane, this is your 2-methylpropane. All right? They are two different names. When they are two different names, bermakna diorang adalah different compound. Kenapa diorang boleh jadi different compound? Because they have different structural formula, different arrangement. Alright. Empat carbon disusun straight. Empat carbon disusun, tiga carbon straight, satu carbon cabang. Nampak? See the difference? So it's no longer salin balik. It's no longer salin balik dah. It's a moment that you need to think. Kamu kena fikir, how do we arrange? Macam mana saya boleh susun untuk dapat different compound? Okay. So, Kena fikir yang tu. Kena susun sekarang. Kita kena susun. Isomerism ada dua jenis. Satu, constitutional isomerism yang saya sepatutnya nak masuk hari ni. And then satu lagi, stereo isomerism. Beza paling ketara, constitutional isomerism is like bahasa biasa dia lah. Bahasa simple dia adalah is like a 2D arrangement. Kita lukis atas, kita lukis atas kertas dan kita boleh nampak beza dia. Okay. And then stereo isomerism is more on 3D arrangement. The difference in 3D arrangement or we call it spatial arrangement. Alright. Dia adalah more on, macam mana nak kata, dia adalah more on 3D. Kamu kena imagine sikit. Bila kita lukis atas kertas, dia akan nampak seakan-akan sama. Tapi kita ada cara untuk menyebabkan dia berbeza dalam 3D. Okay. So. I want to go for constitutional isomer first. I want you to try constitutional isomer first before the next class. Okay, before the next class. Saya nak ajar dulu. Apa beza chain isomer, positional isomer dengan functional group isomer? Okay. First and foremost, chain isomer. Ayat baca sendiri, malas. What is mean by chain isomer? Senang je. Bila chain isomer, chain need to be the same. But, sorry, 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 sorry. Otak saya bergerak ke tempat lain. Chain need to be different. But, positional and functional group isomer, both need to be the same. Okay? Apa maksud rantai kena sama? Saya masih nak guna balik kita tadi dah guna single bond, lepas tu dah guna double bond. Oh, boleh guna alkohol pula. Katakan saya ada C3H. C3H boleh. C3H8O. Okay. Alkohol. So, untuk chain isomer, pertama Miss Wong boleh susun CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Saya kata nak chain isomer kat? Tak boleh. Kena C4. C3 tak boleh ada rantai. C4 H10O. Yap. C4 H10O. Betul. Yap. So, I want to add on this. C4 H10O. Rantai. Okay. Yap. So, some more sikit. When I say it's a chain isomer and I told you that the chain need to be different. Rantai kena berbeza. Sekarang rantai kita empat carbon. Macam mana nak buat rantai tu berbeza? Kita boleh pendekkan rantai tu jadi tiga carbon. Okay. Tapi ada satu carbon lagi kan? C4 teacher, satu carbon lagi nak duduk mana? Satu carbon lagi letak kat tempat lain. And do you realize, and you need to remember, the position need to be the same. The functional group need to be the same. 
in the other words, the OH was still on the side carbon and it's still a OH. Dan kita lengkapkan dengan hydrogen, H2, H3, H, yani H3. You will realize one thing. Carbon, hydrogen, total will be the same. Cuba kira. Betul tak empat hydrogen carbon? Atas bawah. Lapan, uh, sorry, sepuluh hydrogen? Cukup? Atas dengan bawah dua-dua? Oksigen satu, jelas. Betul? And, first and foremost, what are we looking at is this. Bila kita kata rantai kena berbeza, saya harap kamu nampak sekarang rantai berubah dari empat. Jadi tiga. Tapi hanya rantai yang perlu berubah. Your position of the functional group and your functional group itself akan kekal duduk kat carbon pertama. Nampak? And when I say isomer, when I say chain isomer, must be in a pair. Semua isomer kena duduk sepasang. Kenapa semua isomer kena duduk sepasang? Very simple, sayang. Bayangkan Miss Wong tak ada benda ni. I rem saya tak lukis yang ni. Okay, kita kita padam yang bawah ni. Kita tak lukis yang ni. Saya ada yang atas je. Boleh tak saya kata rantai dia berubah? Boleh kok. Hani kata boleh. Hani boleh ke? Kalau saya hanya ada satu orang, saya kata oh rantai dia dah pendek. Macam mana kamu tahu rantai dia pendek? Tak boleh kan? Alright, kamu tak boleh kata rantai dia pendek. Sebab apa kamu tak boleh kata rantai dia pendek? Sebab saya tak nampak pun kamu nak compare dengan siapa. That's why when we talk about isomer, isomer always, always come in a pair. Dia kena sepasang. Dan kalau tadi chain isomer rantai yang berbeza, sekarang dalam positional isomer, rasa-rasa siapa yang kena berbeza? Position lah hampa memang tak nak buka mic. Position lah yang kena different. Bila position different, siapa yang kena sama? The chain kena sama. The functional group kena sama. Saya nak guna yang sama je, C4H10O. So kalau Miss Wong ada CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2OH, yang ni yang pertama. Dan kita kata tadi, rantai kena sama, functional group kena sama, tapi position berubah. So, perlu tak ubah rantai ni sekarang? Tak payah. Kita akan kekal, pasangan dia adalah, kita akan kekal empat carbon. Alright, kita akan kekal empat carbon. Tapi apa yang akan ubah? Position of the OH. OH akan berubah dari carbon pertama ke carbon kedua. Nampak? Dan orang lain akan sama. Pakcik ni masih akan pegang CH3. Pakcik ni akan pegang CH2. Pakcik ni pegang CH. Pakcik ni pegang CH3. And you will realize dia masih adalah C4H10. Notice that? And what is changing in positional isomer? Your OH. Your OH. Dari carbon pertama bergerak ke carbon ke dua. Okay. Are we still together? Soalan saya, ada soalan. Can we move? Alright, can we move again? Tak. Kenapa tak Alif? Sebab dia sama dengan nombor dua. Sebab dia akan jadi sama je dengan nombor dua. Satu, dua. Satu, dua. Nampak? Dia akan jadi sama je. Kita kira satu, kita kira dari kanan. So, OH duduk carbon nombor dua. Satu lagi, kita kira dari kiri. So, OH tu duduk carbon nombor dua. So, kita tak boleh move dah. Nampak? So, at the very beginning, I want you to try your exercise 4.3. I think kalau tak silap saya, question one. Okay? Try to draw the chain isomer, pasangan chain isomer. Try to draw pasangan positional isomer. If you can try on the functional group isomer, even better. 
because functional group isomer in the notes are the example untuk setiap satu yang possible. You can try to figure out what is mean by this, but I will teach you also in the on Wednesday class. Don't worry. Okay, try all the exercises, and if you have any question, ask on Wednesday and try this. We are going into uh, isomer on Wednesday. Okay, both isomer, constitutional and also stereo isomer. All right, and yeah, those yang mic rosa, camera rosa, whatsoever. Make sure ya in kawan-kawan kamu yang tak masuk. Siapa tak masuk? Uh, I think Anissa, right? Ha, manusia yang tak masuk tu cakap kat dia Miss Wong akan tanya soalan nanti. Laila, I, I don't know why tak masuk. Alright, anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. And prepare for your UPS this week, right? Yeah, any question ask about the UPS. Ada soalan kami pergi tak boleh buat tanya. Okay? Alright, that's it for today. I'll see you guys again. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. 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 Thank you, Miss.